Hey, Junior 2000 here coming at you with a reaction of the 2011 Royal Rumble, which is right here. I'm watching the Royal Rumble pay per view, but I'm doing a reaction of the Royal Rumble 2011 match, which is the biggest Royal Rumble with all the 40 Royal Rumble participants. Which was cool. I kind of wish they continued this, but it was just like the only one time they did it. But it has it comes in this DVD with the double feature with a DVD and a Blu-ray. And that's cool. They they get pictures in behind the Blu-rays. All the wrestlers. But yeah, doing a reaction. I just watched a few of the pay-per-view matches on here. Don Ziggler and Edge for the world title was really good. Definitely a good match. The Miz versus Randy Orton for the WWE Championship was good. Definitely a pretty solid match for The Miz having his underrated title reign as WWE Championship. I miss when he was WWE Championship. That was cool. And then you had the Fatal 4 Way Divas Championship match, which was kind of a meh match. It fucking kind of sucked. But now we're going to the 40 Men's Royal Rumble, which is... Right now we're doing a recap. Of, they're doing a recap of all the history of how it is. Then we'll get to the match. Which I'll react and tell what I might thoughts about these wrestlers, what I think about this one and this wrestler, why they should have had him more longer in there. All that shit. Have fun. Do a fun reaction about it. About this longest rumble. Which I think is underrated. I have, yeah, this match is underrated. I I think it's underrated that it was like a forties man's Royal rumble, which was pretty interesting to add ten more guys in the match. But yeah, the Blu-ray does have a cool artwork in the back with all the wrestlers' faces scratched into picture pace, which is awesome. But yeah, this Blu-ray, it, it does have some exclusive content, like a full Raw episode and a spinning regular special features that were from the DVD, and that's it. But yeah, the Blu-ray looks pretty good and good quality of the pay-per-view. Oh, and uh, I'm just doing a reaction because today they're doing the Royal Rumble 2024 pay-per-view, but I don't give a shit. The only, the only reason that I would say, I would say who I want to win that Rumble is either Cody Rhodes or LA Knight. That's it. I don't really give a shit about Punk winning. If he wins, oh, uh, fuck be it. I don't give a shit about Rory Rumble that much anymore. But, um, I don't want either the fucking Rock to win. I don't want the Rock to fucking win. Like, fuck the Rock, in my opinion. I want either Cody Rhodes or LA Knight to win the Rumble. Fuck CM Punk and fuck the Rock. But, yeah. We get a pretty good Finger Eleven song. That was the pay per view for the music for the theme song of this pay per view. Pretty good song. I like Finger Eleven. They sang a few songs in the Punisher soundtrack for the Punisher 2005 movie, which is awesome. But yeah, all in all, I really thought this was an underrated War Rumble match. Like, I think this was, like, to me, I think this was better than 2010 Royal Rumble match, because I did watch that one, too, but uh, I watched it earlier today as well, the 2010 Royal Rumble. It was an okay Rumble match. I don't really find that Rumble underrated at all. It was cool to see Edge winning, but it just, a lot of good wrestlers got eliminated too early, like... Like, Evan Bourne got eliminated too early. Dolph Ziggler got eliminated too early. John Morrison got too eliminated a bit too early. Sheldon Benjamin got eliminated way too fucking early. But, yeah. That's my problem with the 2010 Royal Rumble. Now we're going to the Royal Rumble 2011 match. And now it's starting. First entrant is CM Punk. Like usual. Fuck CM Punk, in my opinion. I was liking CM Punk when I was kind of defending him a bit, but he became like an arrogant ass, like throughout and having that promo with Cody Rhodes, like kind of rubbed me the wrong way about right, CM Punk. So fuck CM Punk. I hope Cody or LA Knight wins. 
Uh, yeah, CM Punk, he had the Nexus, his new Nexus, the group that John Cena buried with Ray Barrett having, and then they kicked Ray Barrett out. And CM Punk's the new leader. But yeah, he has a badass theme song, which I have to admit, I like Kill Switch engaged by, um, yeah, I think it's, um, I think that, yeah, that's Kill Switch engages the band, but the song that they're singing is This Fire Burns. Really good song. It was even a theme song for Judgment Day 2006. Really badass rock metal song. And of course, I remember the fucking core and the new Nexus are brought. They come and brawl for like five minutes. Which I'm gonna fast forward this bullshit so it wouldn't be that long. Because these fucking pricks, they, they go on for like five minutes brawling like a motherfucker, like wasting. Valuable time of the rumble. All right, now they kept, they got their asses out of there. I was Ben in the rumble match. Of course, the the stupid Rajam anonymous laptop said they'll be disqualified if they just keep brawling. So they got their stupid asses out and they stopped the brawl. Now number two is Daniel Bryan. And I thought this look of Dan Bryan was cool. I liked how he had the short hair and he had the little beard that he had. He kind of looked, he kind of looks like Chuck Norris in my opinion. In this look, when he was the U.S. champion, he kind of this. I would, I, I thought this underrated look of Dan Bryan looked awesome. Like he looked like he looks like Chuck Norris, which is badass. But yeah. I'm not gonna say that Punk's a piece of shit or anything. Like he's not like a total piece of shit wrestler or anything. Like he's a good wrestler. It's just like he's probably a person I would never meet and stuff. Like he seems like a tool to everybody. But he did have some pretty good matches. It's just like I'm not a huge fan of him, but I do appreciate that he's a good wrestler. He's not a shitty wrestler, but. After hearing all the stuff about him and being like, like he rubbed everybody the wrong way, he um, he was selfish and he was lazy at times. He wouldn't work well with everybody. But yeah, that's my thoughts about CM Punk. I don't hate him, but I think he's just, he's a bit overrated. Yeah, that drop dropping. Knee kick by Darren Bryan was awesome. To see him from that was awesome. Darren Bryan is kicking some ass, taking no names, but oh fuck, he got bumped. Who's the next one? Now the one of the fucking cores are coming out, and it's Justin Gabriel. Judging Gabriel, I think, is a pretty decent wrestler. It, it sucks he was just a jobber after this. Like, he, even though he turned into a babyface after turn, after leaving the core group and becoming a babyface, he just pretty much turned into a, a jobber. Like, he didn't really do good in wrestling. They just pretty much fucked him over. But I thought his 450 splash was pretty fucking awesome. But yeah, yeah, 450 splash on that motherfucker CM Punk. Go, dipshit. Fuck, he missed. Well, that's his own fucking fault. He took forever. He should have just not waited until balance. He should have fucking went on that motherfucker real fast. That was his own fault. He should have. He should have. Four fishy splat CM Punk. But he's the first eliminated. Now we're going to the countdown, and next entrant is number four. CM Punk and Dan Bryan are still in the ring. Sack Rider. This dude, I think, is generic as fuck. I never was. I never cared for Sack Rider that much. Even when he started going, getting older, and he had that woo woo shit and stuff. 
I didn't really care for Zack Ryder that much at all. Yeah, I don't really care for Zack Ryder that much. But all in all, like he, he, he like everybody would know him nowadays. He's Mac Cardona. He's like in TNA, Impact Wrestling. We call it nowadays. They keep changing fucking TNA's name. They keep calling it TNA Impact Global Force Wrestling. What the fuck? And it with one fucking name, it's getting annoying with different names after another. But it's, it, I think it's T, they went back to TNA now. But yeah, I think Matt Cardona is still there. But he also wrestled in GCW as well. He fought like a death match with with Nick Cage. Not the actor Nicholas Cage. Nick the 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 drug the drug addict hardcore wrestler Nick Cage. That had fought that bloody violent match with with Jerk on on AW Dynamite. Who's the next entry? Number five is William Regal. I don't mind William Regal. It's when I was young, I thought William Regal was fucking boring, but but when I saw him in other matches, like in the past before, he would he fucking kicked ass in matches before, like even matches with like Fitz Finley and Chris Bernard. Uh, who else he wrestled? I think Davy Boy Smith. I think he wrestled Davy Boy Smith. But his his matches in the past were pretty badass. Of course, in the Attitude Era, they gave him the shitty uh, Stephen Regal gimmick where he's a man, such a man's man. He's like a lumberjack, hard-working man where he's wearing a heart, a, a yellow hard hat, working hard hat man hat. I think you call it a hard hat, yeah. But it's like a yellow hard hat where he's like has like lumberjack over like clothes and stuff where he's like working in the woods, being a lumberjack. Worker, but all in all, that was that gimmick just pretty much died like a few months after he had it. The only, I think the only time he appeared in that gimmick on a pay per view was against X Pac in one of the Survivor Series um, tournament matches. But then they, but they both, they both had a silly, so, they pretty solid match, but it ended in a damn deep, in a damn double count out or some shit. But when Regal, when I was young, I thought he was boring. But when I started getting older and seeing his older stuff, I started appreciating William Regal more. Ted DiBiase Jr. and he's he's not doing good so far. Ted DiBiase Jr. he's going to fucking jail for for stealing welfare welfare money and shit. Like, he's totally fucked over. Like, he's not doing good in his life. Because you know a lot of wrestlers that left WWE and they're like ex-WWE superstars? They're not doing good in their life. Like, a lot of them, like, they either get in trouble or either they have bad lives. Like, their they're, they're situa- they're income situations are not doing good or some shit. Like, for example, like, Perry Saturn. It's very sad what happened to Perry Saturn. Like, he's living in a homeless life. That's really sad. What, what happened to Perry Saturn in his life? And even though there's even wrestlers that are homeless, like that's really sad. I think I think Virgil's homeless too. So that's sad too. But yeah, like Teddy Ozzy Jr., like he's not doing good with his life. He's kind of he kind of got he kind of fucked himself over stealing t- um welfare money. So he's going to prison. Like fuck. But yeah, Ted DiBiase Jr. He had the legacy theme song, but he changed it to like this shitty theme song called "I Got for Money." He's trying to persona his dad's gimmick, the Million Dollar Man. That's a shitty gimmick that Ted DiBiase Jr. tried to do. And to me, he's not good as his dad. He they try to have him good, which is I feel like they had potential on Ted DiBiase Jr., but they pretty much fucked him over. Now the next entrant is John Morrison. John Morrison is so high flying and super fucking underrated. 
I wish John Morrison would have won an Aurora Rumble match. That would have been really fucking cool. I wish John Morrison should have won a Royal Rumble match. Like, this motherfucker can kick ass and go into the ring and high fly like a motherfucker. Like, it sucks that a lot of high flyers don't really get Royal Rumble victories. They're only like, they have the spot where they have to, like, do all the flips in the ring and then they get eliminated, like, a few minutes later. Like, that's bullshit. There's times you could have a fucking high flyer wrestler win a fucking Rumble match. Like, you know, with these fucking buff ass motherfuckers that are full of muscle mass, like, fuck them. Get, them. get a high flyer winning a rumble the first time, that'd be badass. Oh shit, John Morrison just saved himself when he he got thrown out by Ron Regal, but he caught himself on the on the ring, on the ring barricade, and then he crawled over, tipping his toes over the top of the railing and then boom jumped over to the steps that's pretty fucking cool I, I i like john morrison man like that's some badass shit right there and also when Rigo got eliminated at the same time after he, he, he dumped over john morrison but yeah that that's cool that john morrison had a badass moment I wish he would have won a Royal Rumble match. That would be fucking badass. Number eight is Yoshi Tatsu, and it, and of course he was, of course he was like a, he's pretty much a jobber. You know, like how, you know, like how every wrestler are like jobbers and they lose a lot of their matches. You know, like how Kogo Beware he lost a lot of his matches, and he's a jobber. You know, like, um. You know, like Blue Meanie, who was in the Attitude Era, he was a jobber and he lost a lot of his matches. Even, um, yeah, because a lot of jobbers are in wrestling. Even the, was it Dwayne Gill, who was known as Gilbert? He was a jobber too. But he was like an infamous jobber. Yeah, Yoshi Josh, he's pretty much a jobber in WWE. He came in. He, he came into WWE's shitty ECW revision, and of course, he had they had to be all racist to him, where they say all racist shit to him. But he beats Chad and Benjamin in his match and wins. Well, yeah, Yohei Tasso, he looked like a wrestler that that could do really good high flying shit, but they just pretty much just use him as a fucking jobber. Like that kind of thing. He looked like he looked like something out of out of something like Shinsuke Nakamura could do, like kick ass in a wrestling match and do all high flying shit. The next one is Husky Harris, and it's everybody would know Husky Harris is AKA Bray Wyatt. Rest in peace, Bray Wyatt. We lost Bray Wyatt last year. He died like the same. He died like the same week as as Terry Funk, so like rest in peace those two legends. But yeah, like especially Bray Wyatt, like he died at a young age of thirty six. Like fuck, that is very young. Because every time when I saw Bray Wyatt, I always thought he was older. I thought he was like around in his mid forties, but I didn't know he was that fucking young, like thirty six years old. Like damn. But yeah, very sad that we lost Bray Wyatt. Of course, this was his first time seeing being, him being seen in WWE as Husky Harris. It was a shitty gimmick. Everybody just did all fat jokes and made fun of him. Like, fuck all that sh bullying shit. Because Husky Harris would prove him wrong when he would become Bray Wyatt, the Eaters of World, and then he'd become one of the creepiest fucking wrestlers. That's bad. That was awesome to see. And he also had the Fiend, which I didn't really care for the Fiend. I think the Fiend was overrated. But the uh, but when he became at the when he had the when when he had the what was that mask? The mask that was in the Black Phone movie. He used that mask as the Captain Howdy mask. It was pretty much like his Captain Howdy gimmick. Or Uncle Howdy, whatever the fuck they want to call it. But at first they were trying to do it good, but they had him do a shitty match with 
L.A. Knight, who was another great wrestler, L.A. Knight. Him, Ray Wyatt and L.A. Knight had a shitty lights out. Uh, they had a shitty Mountain Dew pitch black match, which was crap. And it lead to nowhere. And sadly, that was his. That was Bray Wyatt's last match. And then months later, he would pass away, which was really sad to hear about him passing away at a young age of 36. Like fuck. And it's sad that two Bray, two Wyatt families were gone. Brody Lee, aka Luke Harper, and Bray Wyatt. Two Wyatt family members are gone. The only one that's left is Eric Rowan, the sheep, the sheep mask. But yeah, rest in, you, totally rest in peace, Bray Wyatt. I I like Bray Wyatt. I don't give a fuck when anybody says, "Oh, he sucked in the ring." Oh, he didn't. He was not that great. Fuck all they want to say. I like Bray Wyatt. I thought he was entertaining and creepy. But yeah, the next entrance was Chavo Guerrero, Eddie Guerrero's nephew. Pretty much Eddie Guerrero's brother's son. Because cause Chavo Guerrero Jr., his dad is Chavo Claster. And he wrestled in the past too, and he's a great wrestler. I don't mind Chavo, but he's not good as he's he's not good as his uncle Eddie. To me, I prefer Eddie Guerrero over Chavo in my opinion any day. But next entry is Mark Henry, the world's strongest man. I do like Mark Henry. Even though a lot of people say he's boring, like he's fucking shitty and stuff. Oh no, I do like Mark Henry, even though some of his matches may suck. But he does, he does have a pretty good presence, and he's a pretty awesome. He's a pretty awesome wrestler. Anyway. He also has a pretty badass theme song by Three Six Mafia. Somebody's gonna get your heads kicked in. Somebody's gonna get your heads kicked in. Boom, shit, do. Beat him up, break his neck, break his neck. Come on, bring him up. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool song by Street Three Six Mafia. Yeah, Mark Henry just eliminated Yoshi Tatsu. But all in all, Mark Henry. The thing that I noticed about Mark Henry is when I was like reading about a top ten wrestlers where they had bad hygiene. And Mark Henry was on that list, and and some people said that some of the wrestler, someone who wrote the, the 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 list on that website, said that some of the wrestlers refused to work with Mark Henry because he stunk like shit, like he had a really bad odor smell. I'm like, holy shit! Because <laughs> I was like surprised he was on that list because there was a lot of wrestlers that was like, what the fuck that bad odor smell, like. You know who was number one? That was the bad odor smell. Andre the Giant. I was like, what the fuck? He had bad odor? Yeah, like, that list was insane because, like, a lot of wrestlers had bad odors in wrestling. Even, um... Yeah, of course, Vader was known to have a bad odor smell because he never watched... He, he was known to not wash his outfit. His his outfit always stunk like shit. Where it's because it had all the smell of the sweat that he would re yeah he would reek from the sweats of wrestling and stuff. And he never washed it, so that's why he's on the list too. Because everybody knows about odor like Vader having a bad odor smell. But yeah, Mark Henry, I like Mark Henry. I think he's pretty cool. It's just. They brought him to AEW and they're not doing shit with him. Same with Big Show. They brought them to AEW and they're not doing shit with them. So what the fuck was the point? The other entrant that came before that before I was starting talking was JTG from Prime Time, and yeah, it was when Prime Time was already split and Chad Gaffer got released after their feud and. He's already been in wrestling for a while, and he said like a lot of people forgot about JTG. Like he's pretty getting like forgotten in, in this time. Because when when a lot of time when tag team wrestlers break up, it kind of it kind of sucks when they're like they're like split apart and they have they go solo. But it turns out one of them one of them goes famous and one of them flops. But there goes JTG. He got eliminated by the the next entrant that came out right now, Michael McGillicuddy. Where everybody knows him as AK Curtis Axel. 
Mr. Perfect Son. And yeah, Curtis Axel, he's pretty decent. And I don't know why they didn't like they didn't utilize him that well. But yeah, Curtis Axel's a pretty decent wrestler. Just they could have done more with him, like to like have the magic as his dad, but a lot of times when I see like the daughters or the sons trying to be wrestlers from these great wrestlers, a lot of times they're not gonna be that good. But a lot of times they'd be surprised. You'd be surprised by them. Yeah, Miguel Getty and Harris just eliminated Tez DiBiase Jr. Yep. Next entry. The Masterpiece Chris Masters. Yeah, Chris Masters. I, I like Chris Masters, but it sucks that they didn't really utilize him either. But he had a pretty cool healer's gimmick where he would fuck everybody over. Where we used the master lock on them, like the everybody knows it as the full Nelson, the full Nelson lock. But it's like his finish. It's like his move that he's known for as the master lock. It's a pretty cool, devastating move, but they kind of fucked it over when they had Bobby Lashley and John Cena buried the move where they they got out of it. Yeah, Chris Andrew was pretty decent. Like, he was another wrestler that they didn't utilize that well. It just seems like a lot of these wrestlers don't really get utilized that well, either. But it's cool, it's cool that they get their moments to shine in the Rumble matches. And I do like when Rumble matches do that. You utilize them, you get them to wrestle these wrestlers from this different brand and this different brand. Yeah, I like that. Who's number 15? Another Nexus member, David Otunga, a lawyer. That buff up motherfucking lawyer dude that's the Nexus member. Of course, David Ochunga appeared in the movie The Call with Holly Berry, which is a pretty solid movie. Pretty decent, solid roller film. But yeah, David Ochunga appeared in that movie. He, he was the John Laronitis, his, his kiss-ass assistant, who pretty much like, went with John Laronitis everywhere and helped him out and pretty much kissed his ass to defend him a lot. Like, you know, John Laronitis is a good person, but... That things came out about that son of a bitch, Donald Knight, and he's a creepy motherfucker. And fuck, they got rid of John Morrison. Fucking Nexus. Fuck. Damn it! I was I was interested in seeing John Morrison more in the match, but the fucking Nexus bastards got him out of there. Then they got out Mark Henry. Of course, Chris Matter was out too. Tyler Rex. This was a forgotten wrestler that really nobody didn't remember this wrestler being in WWE. I think he appeared in a Cyber Sunday Dragon Rice kind of paper where he was in one t one branding team and that was it. And he appeared in this match and that in a Battle Royal on SmackDown once. But everybody knows that he's a transgender person now. Like he's a like he's a transgender person. Like he's known as a woman now. Which I'm cool with everybody entitled to their to everybody's sexuality to wish their own. Totally respect that. But yeah, like everybody knows that he's a transgender person now. Like he's a he, he finds himself as a woman now. But yeah, yeah, but that's the wrestler Tyler Rex. He got eliminated by the Nexus. And of course, CM Punk's a chicken shit motherfucker that, like, I want my Nexus to eliminate everybody so I could be lazy and not do anything. 
And of course, I forgot the commentators. You got Mass Track, who's a sh who's a shitty ass commentator. Jerry Lawler, who's trying his best to hold his commentary, but he's annoyed by Michael Cole, which is the other one that's the next one. Michael Cole is a jackass heel that creams over the fucking Miz and shit, thinking he's the best thing from WWE. And he overdoes his heelish commentary. Michael Cole's a jackass, but he does it pretty well. The next entry that they're attacking is Vladimir Koslov, and he was a wrestler that the we're building up as this monster Russian heel wrestler, like he was like supposed to be this big dominant Russian heel monster that fucked everybody over, even got a victory over the Undertaker to show how f dominant he is. But they pretty much like showed how fucking boring he is when he had that match with Triple H at Survivor Series 2008. Everybody blew the shit out of that match because he was so fucking boring in the match. But he would go on there like being wrestling still until like he became a baby face when he teamed up with Santino Morella and they had their tag team trope and then they won the tag team titles and that was it. Well, Coslon was in there for 30 seconds and he got his ass kicked by the Nexus and he got thrown out. So the Nexus are still in the, in the Rumble match. CM Punk, Michael McGillicuddy, Husky Harris, and David Otunga. The next entrant is R Truth. I like R Truth. He is very underrated. He's probably the only thing I like about WWE. Mean being entertained with it because he's so funny as hell, especially with the storyline he has with the Judgment Day. It's pretty funny, but all in all, I just don't give a shit about wrestling right now. Like, I think this product is fucking boring. Yeah, all in all, it's just I miss a lot of these good wrestlers and it's just a lot of these new ones. I don't really give a shit. The only ones I, the only new ones I like, is LA Knight. And Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes has been my favorite wrestler since 2011. But, and also I want to mention R Truth because I, I I'm also praising R Truth. I think he's underrated. R Truth is another one I think is like those are the three wrestlers I like in WWE. I don't give a shit about anybody else in wrestling right now. There were some wrestlers I liked in AEW, but they're gone. Like Jimmy Havoc, he got fucked over. It sucks that he's not there in AEW. I think he quit wrestling as well. Because that fucking bullshit allegation that came out about him. But yeah. Our truth just got eliminated by the new Nexus. The new Nexus are just being dominant motherfuckers. Now the next entry is the Great Cock Lee. Or they call him the Great Khaki, because that, was it that YouTuber Brian Zane? I thought it was pretty funny the way he called the Great Khali, Great Khaki. I don't know, it's pretty funny. But, I like the Great Khali. I, a lot of people say that, oh, he sucks, he should not wrestle. It's bullshit that he got a lot of criticism. I thought, like, a lot of big wrestlers got a lot of criticism for that. Even Andre Giant, a lot of people don't like Andre Giant. They think he's overrated. It seems like a lot of big measures, they just kind of get shit on for my, like, for a lot of reasons, which I don't get. John Gonzalez, of course, they didn't utilize him well, but everybody hated him. They thought he sucked. But a lot of people want to say, oh, his match with Undertaker at WrestleMania 9 was the worst match. Fuck no. I've seen worse matches than that. A great Kali, he first came on as a monster heel, beating up Rey Mysterio, Undertaker, Batista, Kane, all the baby faces. John Cena, really pretty good rivalry with John Cena for a bit. But of course, Great Kali, he kind of became like a PG character, a Punjabi playboy, kissing a lot of women in the arena with a Kali kiss cam and all that bullshit. And became like a goofy wrestler in it, but 
I do, I do like Great Khali. Just, I like a lot of tall wrestlers. They, they, I think that's underrated. Is like a lot of tall wrestlers, they don't really get appreciated, which kind of sucks. Next entry was Mason Ryan. The, 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 he was the new Nexus member. And he just eliminated picking up. He picked up Greg Holly and threw him over the fucking ropes. And of course, Mason Ryan, he was not really. He was a wrestler that a lot of people didn't care for. And he was all. He also looks like Batista, which is weird. He he looks exactly like Batista, and everybody kept saying like Batista. They kept chanting Batista because he looks like, exactly like Batista. Even the build, the muscles, the biceps, the, the 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 just even the haircut and the beard. He looks like Batista. Even the face too. But yeah, Mason Ryan. He was a wrestler that I just remember in 2011, but they just pretty much forgot about him. After he left the Nexus and became a baby face, they just didn't really use him that much. He was forgotten. Yeah, there's Booker T. He was the surprise entrant. Booker T. WCW. Five times. Five times. Five times. Five times. Five times time WCW champion. <laughs> My striker's marking out. I'm marking out, bro. <laughs> Booker T, I think, is an underrated wrestler. Fuck Triple H for screwing him over at WrestleMania 19. Triple Booker T should have won the world. I know it was it was it was cool that he won it when he was King Booker, but I think he we deserved it more at WrestleMania 19 against Triple H because he needed that fucking victory. But guess what? Triple H fucking ruined all those wrestlers, and he was a selfish prick. He wouldn't put them over. Yeah, like fuck Triple H up his ass. Triple H, I mean Booker T kicked all the Nexus, the new Nexus asses. And now he's gonna do the spinner Rooney. WCW sucker. Five time WCW champion sucker. I always thought that was so cool when he did the spinner Rooney. There's that was badass. I miss seeing that shit. That's badass stuff right there. Fuck. Booker T got eliminated by by a uh, rip off of Bautista, Mason Ryan. Wait, just drinking a little water before I continue talking. Now, who's the fucking new entrance? Of course, John fucking Cena is the next entrance. I don't have a lot of problems with John Cena, but he does kind of come out as a prick at times. Even when he's a baby face. It looks like he doesn't want to be a heel. Because he looked like he needed a break from being a baby. A lot of times when you're a baby face, you need a break from it. But there's times where heels don't need to be baby face, and there's times baby faces do need not to be heels. I feel like John Cena should have been a heel. Because he went too long as a baby face. And it kind of got... The Super Cena shit kind of kind of got tiresome. There's stuff that I did... Agree, this, I really disagreed from John Cena doing. Like, pretty much burying Chris Cannon on Howard Stern's shitty radio show. And saying that Chris Cannon wasn't, wasn't a good wrestler. Bullshit. If he would have been in a ring with... If John Cena would have been in a ring with Chris Cannon... Johnson could have shut the fuck up and he could have respect Chris Cannon for that. Like, I'll take my work back. I'm sorry, Chris. We did a good match. No. He goes on to fucking Barry saying that Chris Cannon was a, wasn't a good wrestler. No, Chris Cannon's a better wrestler than Johnson, in my opinion. Because Chris Cannon is super underrated. It was bullshit that he got fucked over by WWE. WWE made fun of him because he was gay. With that. With that boy George 
outfit that he was seeing, Don't You Wanna Hurt Me? And he gets that share shot to the head by Undertaker. Like, that was bullshit from WWE doing that dirty shit to him. Of course, John Cena eliminated the rest of the Nexus because he's super fucking Cena. He eliminates everybody. He's like, he's like, everybody that doesn't stand baby faces that are too much. Everybody hated Hulk Hogan because he did that shit too. Not that I'm hating Hulk Hogan. I I, I don't mind Hulk Hogan. But there's times that Hulk Hogan kind of went too much. Especially winning the Rumble twice, which I didn't get. Even that moment where he eliminated he eliminated Sid Justice, that was a fucking heelish move that he did. And a lot of people were not even were not even sharing at that. They were booing the shit out of uh, Hulk Hogan, which I think was the original audio, because I got to see the original audio that was on Daily Motion, but it got removed. I don't, or I don't know where it is, but I got to see it like years ago, the original audio. And then I have the DVD that WWE made with the anthology. They did a lot of stupid changes where the original audio, everybody booed when Hulk Hogan eliminated Sid Justice. But when Hulk Hogan got eliminated, when he eliminated Sid Justice on the DVD version, they added cheers in the background to make it look like everybody's cheering for that. Limiting shit justice. That's why they do all those stupid audio changes, all those editings on music and all that shit. Even the WCW entrance, they edit a lot of entrance music. They don't show the original audio music to them. So of course, the next entry is Hornswoggle. Which... It was funny when Horace Roswell was revealed as Mr. McMahon's son because they did. He does look exactly like Vince McMahon, but it. But it did some funny comedy stuff. Like Horace Roswell is like a midget wrestler that's like a leprechaun, but he's like, he's used a lot in wrestling. Of course, he was that Mr. McMahon's son. He was teaming up with Finley, and then he also appeared in other matches and comedy skits. I remember when the Miz had like, he. I think the Miz interrupted. Hornswoggle and Goldust, they were shooting this gun or something. This shirt gun that was shooting um, shirts out of the air to, for fans to catch. And I think when he beat up Goldust and then he, and he, and he pinned, I think he missed pinned, uh, what is it, Hornswoggle to a corner. And he held the, the shirt gun. And what's so funny is that I think Miz was telling him, like, big, big Hornswoggle. And then he shoots the, the fucking shirt gun and two. <laughs> towards Hornswoggle's crotch where he hits him in the low blow with the, the shirt gun fighting, firing out like a grenade like boom <laughs> that was fucking hilarious I have to admit, that was pretty funny from the Miz even though it was a hillish move it was pretty funny but of course Hornswoggle is up in this match everybody hates Hornswoggle yeah I know he's a PG character but of course He's doing a fucking F you on the next entrance that was Tyson Kidd. Who Tyson Kidd is actually retired and he's married to Natalia Nightheart. And of course everybody enjoys John Cena teaming up with Hornswoggle. I don't hate Hornswoggle, but he he, he does kinda come off a little irritating, but it, it's fine. Like, it doesn't bother me. I see midget wrestlers a lot in wrestling. Like, hell, King Kong Bunny had to fight midgets in WrestleMania 3. Now, there's the next... There's this... There's the next core member. He's Slater. Who's another wrestler I think is underrated. He's Slater. Of course, he had the one-man band, stupid gimmick, after this. But he's pretty cool. Like, like he's a pretty cool wrestler. I think he's underrated. He even had a pretty good title reign, tag team title reign with Rhino, when they were, like, the first 
inaugural SmackDown Tag Team Title Champions, and yeah, that was pretty cool of them to win it. And of course, East Slater would go on to be disappearing in wrestling after that. I don't know if he's in Impact Wrestling, but I know he was in the Impact Wrestling, but like years ago, after he left um, WWE. <laughs> Fucking Tapple, Splash from Horror Swaggle. <laughs> but yeah, I can see why people don't like Horn Jog. Well, he's he is kind of like Santino Morella. He is kind of a PG character. Cause a lot of people were not really liking his PG shit. But don't kid yourself, that doughy little fellow weighs a lot. But I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I think Horsewalk is more entertaining than anything that's that's in the fucking WWE right now. That shit is just boring. All that women wrestling crap, in my opinion. Fuck women wrestling nowadays. Now the next entrant is Kofi Kingston. Boom, boom, SOS. Yeah, Kofi Kingston. I always I I I I used to like his uh, Jamaican gimmick, where you have the SOS music, the, which is the Jamaican music he has, the Jamaican accent. I thought he was cool because Kobe Kingston was pretty cool as a high flyer, but when he started the New Day, it's stupid. It was stupid in my opinion. I didn't care for the New Day at all. I felt New Day was more PG than Horsewoggle. Like fuck New Day, in my opinion. But I, I like Kobe Kingston when he was like the the boom boom Jamaican wrestler. And of course he was known to do a lot of really crazy shit in, in the Rumble matches. Like how he would save himself to Rumble. Right, when he's in the Rumble matches, he gets tossed out, but he saves himself in really cool, mysterious ways, which is awesome. Always highlighting Rumble matches. <sighs> So right now it's just Kingston and Cena wrestling and Hornswoggle just standing there. Not doing shit. Of course, the American American Jack Swagger. This dude. I always found Jack Swagger so boring. I never really cared for Jack Swagger at all. I always thought he was just a boring wrestler, in my opinion. Even in AEW, as Jake Hager, I don't really care for Jack Hager at all. And that's what he goes by nowadays, is Jake Hager. But, Jack, but yeah, Jake Hager, he, he has a boring personality. Even in AEW, he just feels boring. He even had a boring match with Dustin Rose because Dustin Rose had to carry his ass in that match. Because Dustin Rose is a very underrated wrestler. Jack Swagger's so boring, he had to like... Dustin Rose had to carry his ass in the match. And of course, Jack Swagger is about to attack Hornswoggle. Which I don't get why people are feeling bad. Like, like It's like he's going to attack a kid or some shit. Which I don't get. Hornswoggle is a grown ass guy. Even though he's a he's a midget, he's a grown ass guy. Like he's wrestling in a fucking rumble match. Like there's like no special treatment for that shit. Like come on. Like he's not a kid or anything. If it was a kid, okay. Like oh shit, they gotta take it easy. They gotta not go too rough. But it's a grown guy. It's like. Like Hornswoggle is like around around John Cena and Kofi Kingston's age. Yeah, Sheamus, the next entrant. I don't mind Sheamus. When he first started, he kind of he was kind of green when he first started, but he started proving a year later after he debuted. And of course, nowadays he he he, he does decent matches with Gunther, which are pretty good match, really good hardcore matches. They're not brutal matches, but like hardcore, physical wrestling matches, old school wrestling matches. They do. 
Of course, of course, Seamus kicks Hornswoggle. But like everybody thinks it was, oh shit, that was shocking. Like there's no fucking special treatment. Hornswoggle is a grown ass guy. Like he got involved in the fucking rumble match. Like what more can they do? Like what more can they do? He's in the fucking rumble match. Easy with physical wrestling. Like what the fuck? Bro kick to Hornswoggle off the rope and dang, Hornswoggle was eliminated. Then but yeah, Hornswoggle got it. Bro kick. Yep. The only one that are in the ring is John Cena, Jack Snyder, Kofi Kingston, and Sheamus. Next entrant is Rey Mysterio. 619, Puyaka, Puyaka, 619. I like Rey Mysterio. I'm a Rey Mysterio mark. I like Rey Mysterio. It was stupid, like, that year in 2011. It was stupid that John Cena screwed over Rey Mysterio winning the WWE Championship that night. And later in the evening of that night, go on to defeat Rey Mysterio for the title. Which is so bullshit. That was the other thing I hated from John Cena was defeating Rey Mysterio as WWE Champion. But yeah, I like Rey Mysterio. He has a lot of badass matches. Even matches in ECW and WCW were gold matches. Like Rey Mysterio's match against. Um, Well, obviously his match with Eddie Guerrero and Halloween Havoc was pretty badass, but he still had some other good matches in EC. I mean WCW. Oh yeah, it was the one where Billy he faced Billy Kidman and Ruby Two Guerrero at Starcade. That was a good one. That was a good trip of thread match. Rey Stadio just eliminated Jack Swagger, generic ass wrestler Jack Swagger is. Number 30, now we get to the 30 spot. Because then now they're adding 10 more wrestlers because it's the 40 men rumble. Now it's the number 30 mark and it's Wade Barrett, who's not a bad wrestler. I, do, I don't mind Wade Barrett. He had a pretty cool thing on end of days, but it just he didn't he personally didn't like the song, which I disagree. I thought it was a cool song. But now the now the now the rumble's starting to pick up because now it's already to the thirty mark, and usually when it's the thirtieth entrance, that's the end of the rumble of the entrance. Like no more coming out. So guess what? Ten more are coming out. Yeah. It's now 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 the rumble's starting to pick up. It's just like I don't really care for the current ones that are coming out. It's just the one that I thought was so awful is the one that Brock Lesnar won in 2022. Such a waste of a rumble match. Like the match was so boring. I wasn't even caring about Rock. I wasn't even giving a shit about Rock Lesnar winning. Because the roster was so fucking bad. It had a lot of boring ass wrestlers. That was like the worst rumble I have ever seen. If anybody wants to know what was the worst rumble I've seen, it's easily War Rumble 2022 with Brock Lesnar winning. That was the most boring fucking match that I ever saw. Now, the next entrant, the 31, is the 31 entrance is Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler is number 31, as in the 31 movie from Rob Zombie's 31. 
Which I, I will definitely review Rob Zombie movies, especially 31. I'll definitely review that one. I used to hate the movie because I thought it was a piece of sh It was a stupid piece of shit, but... I remember not minding the movie, but yeah, I'll definitely review 31 some other time. But yeah, Don Ziggler's 31, and we got like nine more wrestlers to come out. Number 32? Who's the number 32? Holy shit. It's Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Who's number 32? Is, is Diesel Kevin Nash. Like, Kevin Nash is okay. I never really cared for him. I thought he was kind of... Like, he's probably one big wrestler I thought was boring. Because I just felt like he was lackluster. And I think he's... I think he was overrated as WWE Champion. Like, the only good match that I thought Diesel had as WWE Champion was the, against Bret Hart at Survivor Series 1990... At Survivor Series 1995. That was probably the only good match I thought he, he had, in my opinion. Even his match with Undertaker at WrestleMania 12 was pretty good and pretty underrated. But yeah, Diesel made his return in this match. And of course, in this in this year, 2011, he would go on to feud with trip, his, his friend Triple H. And they would have that sledgehammer on a Sledgehammer on a on a I don't know what it was it I think it was a ladder sledgehammer match where they had to climb the ladder. Was, so say goodbye. What is yours? Now is mine. And bad broken dreams. That's a badass fucking song from Chom and Harvest singing broken dreams. The theme song of Drew McIntyre. I miss that theme song. I wish Drew McIntyre came back to that song. Yeah, I was thinking about like Triple H and Diesel would have a feud and they would go on to have this sledgehammer on a pole match, which is like a ladder match, but they have to pick up the sledgehammer and use it and then pin the match. That's it. It was an okay match, but whatever. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a shitty feud, in my opinion, but the match wasn't that bad. But yeah, the, the, the people you started to pick up, it was kind of slow when the Nexus started eliminating a lot of wrestlers. Like, what the fuck? But yeah, the, the match is starting to pick up. There's some good wrestling there. Drew McIntyre, I don't mind. I wish he brings back Broken Dreams, not having his, his fucking current music that I don't really care for. To me, it's a ripoff of Body Piper's music, in my opinion. The Miz, Protégé, is his Protégé, Alex Riley's making his entrance. S34, entrance 34. Shut the fuck up, Michael. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> That's funny. It's like, shut the fuck up, Michael. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> I'm, I was, as I was really interrupted by Michael Cole, he's a stupid, stupid son of a bitch. Um, the, the, thir the entrance 34 was Alex Riley, but Mrs. Poor J assistant. Who's another wrestler that got fucked over in WWE, but also fucked over by John Cena? Is Alex Riley. And he also, like, he also would go on to turn baby face and have a few with the, have like one match with the Miz. They should have built that match and they should have had it all the way to like involve like a street fight match at SummerSlam or some shit. 
That would, that would have been really cool to build that up to like Survivor Series, and in like in a first like a grudge match or a street fight, whatever. Because it was pretty good. It was a pretty good build up with Alex Riley and the Miz having a feud that they could have built up to. The 35 entrant is Big Show. Yeah, the Big Show's making his entrant. That's number 35. <laughs> Big Show and Kevin Nash are staring at each other. They're like the tallest motherfuckers right there. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus are trying to go after Big Show, but he's like, fuck that shit. Man, Michael Cole is such an ass kisser. Yes. Yeah, my cool such an ass kisser. He just sucked the, the Mrs. Dick. He'd be such an ass kisser to him. Big Show is just being a dominant motherfucker. And eliminating Dolph Ziggler and just showing how he's mad. He wants to kick some ass, take no name, like a motherfucker. Number 36 entering. Ezekiel Jackson. Ezekiel Jackson's okay, but he's like one of the he's one of the core members. But he was like, but like he would go on to win an IC title match, IC title, and have a reign of it for a bit. But that was it. Holy shit! Ezekiel Jackson just eliminated the big show. He, he picked up the motherfucker. With a big arm length and just push him over the ropes. That is one. That is one strong son of a bitch right there. But Big Show a moment ago he eliminated your man. Powers. Drew McIntyre is gone. Now they have the two core members that are there: Wade Barrett and Ezekiel Jackson. All the nexes and core members are all gone. Because the core and Nexus had a shitty brawl in the beginning of the match, which lasted like five fucking minutes. But all in all, it's a pretty solid match. Like, I do enjoy this Rumble match. I think it's a bit underrated because it is the longest Rumble match ever. It's a big one because it's 40 men, which I think is cool. Of course, number 37 is Santino Morella. This goofy motherfucker. Of course, he had the funny ass entrant elimination where he got eliminated one second by Kane and he falls out of, his, he falls out of the ring into his ass. And he's, just, I, he's yelling at the referee, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. No, I wasn't ready. <laughs> Dumb shit. He got broke kick. I kind of like this rum. I actually like this rumble better than the 2010 one, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I actually like this one better than the 2010 rumble because I got to see that rumble match earlier. I thought it was an okay match. Because I think there's some solid wrestlers that are in the match. Like Kofi Keaton is still in there. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, he's still in the match. You got Rey Mysterio in there. Wade Barrett's a pretty solid wrestler. 
is being told right now, ladies and gentlemen, from our stats this oh. Cena has been in over 25 minutes here in the Royal Rumble matchup. Oh. Is so far impressed with two. Oh, 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 Yes, but this match is a long ass match, but it's still a pretty good match in the most part. Alberto de Rio. He's a wrestler that got cancelled. Got accused of kidnapping and murder and shit. Well, attempted murder. Like, like they pretty much cancel culture him everywhere in wrestling nowadays. But I like Alfred Rio. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always like that in I always like that announcer Ricardo Rodriguez where you would announce Alberto Del Rio's name. I thought that was a badass ring announcer. Like announcing him in Spanish and knowing his name. Alberto Del Rio. And Alberto Del Rio comes out in these badass these badass looking cars. Bringer starts yelling at him. Vente, vente, pendejo. Vente, pendejo, get in the ring. Now he's going to the next entrance. Like, fuck, he's been in the entrance for a while. Next entrance, the Viper Randy Orton. The Viper ran you on kicking some ass, taking no names. Boom! So, oh, he threw Dario into those steps. I'm actually surprised he's out there after the beating I gave him during our match. Randy Orton at number 39. But yeah, I'm starting, uh, yeah, like, the match was, it started slowing down when the Nexus started throwing everybody out. I thought that shit sucked. But the match is starting to peel up more, and it's really cool, and it's great. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shane to 2009, where Randy Orton RKO'd six men in the same Royal Rumble matchup. RKO, RKO. Oh, my shit. Kofi Kingston is gone. Sheamus is gone. And now they have Randy Orton and John Cena doing a stupid stare down, which I always hate these kind of stare downs. It worked in the past, but when it's like in futuristic matches, like nowadays, that shit's just getting old already. Like, it worked with the legends. Just leave it to the legends that did that moment, especially with Hogan and Warrior, with the the big stare down they had. That was badass. But this is just lame and just tiresome to see. Leave it to the legends that did it. That gave us that pulse pounding moment. Number now we get to the final entrant and it's number forty is number forty is Kane. Kane is Kane is the one that eliminated eleven people and the challenge of one world rumble match, which is a good rumble match. Bit of a hardcore rumble match. I think he was involved in that moment where Raven and Al Snow started throwing shit and crap in the ring, and they started hitting like. Each other with bowling balls, trash cans, kendo sticks, all that shit. Even garbage flew around the ring. Bunch of lettuce and garbage shit flew in the ring. That was pretty funny. But yeah, Kane had a pretty cool moment in that 2011, I mean, 2001 Rumble. Even before that, he had he had a pretty badass moment in the in the 99 Rumble. But it sucks that he got a, he eliminated himself. Because he had a badass moment where he eliminated like three wrestlers in a really badass quick moment. Yeah, but the match has been going on for a while. It's super fucking long, but it is a good match. Oh, yeah. 
I'm just stretching my legs because like, I've been sitting here for a while watching it. Like it's a long match. Guys, anyone want to make some picks? Chat is. I'll start with you. So I think. I think the blood cells and the blood streams vessels don't go through because you have to like get to like stretch because you've been sitting there. I've been crisscrossed for a while watching the match for almost an hour. And the match is now it's already like an hour and 10 minutes. Like, shit. Mysterio and Kane are gone. Now the final four is Cena, Barrett, Gordon, and Del Rio. And of course, one sneaky ass wrestler wasn't gone in the match. Because they think it was just those four wrestlers. Of course, nobody doesn't want Cena win because he already. He fuck, the thing that I, that I have a problem with that 2008 win, that 2008 win that he had, they made Johnson an idiot to like lose that match to Randy Orton. Like instead of saving the match to WrestleMania, he he wasted on a match. He wasted the WWE Championship match on a No Way Out pay per view. Like what a fucking idiot! He didn't, he didn't save it for WrestleMania. And but guess what? The match ended the DQ, so he pretty much fucking wasted that Royal Rumble victory, which was kind of a big waste of time. Like he wasted that fucking Royal Rumble victory. But on and on, I do see that why people don't like him. People get be tired of a baby face that's over and over. Like, all right, it's just gonna get boring and shit. It's like how people felt about Hulk Hogan. People were just tired of Hulk Hogan for a while. That's why when when people saw Hulk Hogan eliminated at the '92 Rumble, people were cheering. People were like, "Finally, he's he's gonna be in this fucking mess and eliminating all these wrestlers that he wants to show his superpower and shit." And when he got eliminated, everybody when when everybody eliminated when when I think uh, Sid judged when he got eliminated by Hulk Hogan, everybody booed the shit out of Hulk Hogan for that because they thought that was a heelish move. That was like that. It was legit a heelish move that he did. It was a it was a heelish dickish move that he did. But yeah. This is a long match, but it, it's a good match either way. Because you got some pretty good talented wrestlers here. A lot better than the roster that they have nowadays. The roster nowadays is just fucking boring. Attitude adjustment. Fuck the attitude adjustment. It's called the FU. That's what the movie's called. Not attitude adjustment. FU. That's what it's called. Alex Riley distract, is distracted John Cena, and now the Miz got a look. He eliminated John Cena. Of course, John Cena is kind of whining about he's eliminated. He, What the fuck? What does it have to do with Michael Cole? Even though Michael Cole's a, even though Michael Cole's a dipshit, what does it have to do with Michael Cole? It's just Mike. It's just John Cena being a whiny jackass in the match. You know, like how Shawn Michael was a whiny jackass at the end of the 2010 match. That didn't make any sense. But the final three is Wade Barrett, Brad Jordan. And Alberto Del Rio. They're dominating on Randy Orton, Barrett, and Del Rio. 
WrestleMania. That was a brilliant move by the champ. And again, King, if you were in the position, you probably would have done the same thing. Guys, the rubble match continues right now. Randy Orton is out of court to take out Perry. Big Del Rio. Orton looking to win the Royal Rumble for the second time in three years. Yeah, this has been a fun reaction. Like, I just, I just want to react it on a Rumble match because I know today they're having the Royal Rumble 2024. Personally, I don't give a shit about wrestling nowadays. I think wrestling sucks now. Barrett's has gone. I mean, Orton's gone. Del Rio won. Alberto Del Rio, he won. Ricardo Rodriguez is a badass ring announcer, in my opinion. On the best world, Rio. I can't say good as Ricardo Rodriguez, but he's a badass ring announcer. I have to admit, the way he's talking in Spanish and pronounce his name, Alberto de Rio, so badass. Ah, oh, this jackass Santino Morello. He's still in the match. He's the sneaky bastard that's still in the match. Yeah, this Ben Devil is wasting time doing the stupid flute crap. Like, what an idiot. Like, why are you wasting time? Don't do that. Don't do real. Oh, um, idiot. What am not Ben Devil? You gotta be kidding me. Fucking Ben Devil. He got his own ass out. Santino got his own dumb ass self out. Alberto Del Rio won the match. Alberto Del Rio was cool winning this match. I thought it was cool. To me, it would have been like, would you really want Santino Morello winning the fucking Rumble match? I would say, fuck no. No, I prefer Del Rio winning the Rumble match. Because I don't mind Alberto Rio. He's a pretty good wrestler. But it sucks that he's canceled. he got canceled by cancel culture now because he got in trouble with being accused of kidnapping and attempted murder and shit. And he does nobody doesn't want to work with him in rest in wrestling organization. Nobody doesn't want to work with him. Because he's a cancel cult cancel culture got to him. Fuck cancel culture, but it's only necessary if, like if people are pieces of shit, like like Rachel Segler. Fuck her. What? Well, fuck Rachel Segler. She fucked herself over. My little bitch. But yeah, Alberto Alberto Del Rio winning was pretty cool, and this was a really solid match. This Royal Rumble. 40 men Royal Rumble match was pretty good. Even though it was a bit of a long ass match. But I do enjoy this match. To me, this is better than the than the current crap. Of course, Santino he got his ass thrown out because he's such an idiot. He, he was being cocky. He was like doing the stupid flute thing that he does. Before he instead of throwing Del Rio out, like uh, whatever. I'm happy with Del Rio winning. San Luis, both the seas, Mexico. San Luis, both the seas, Mexico. That's where my, that's where my grandma's, that's where my grandma's from, fam, in her family are from. Alberto Del Rio. Welcome to the road to WrestleMania. Oh, Santino Morello is back. Very underrated Royal Rumble match, hands down. Definitely enjoyed it. But yeah, that's the Royal Rumble, folks. My reaction on the 2011 Rumble. That's the 40 biggest Royal Rumble match that ever happened. 
yeah, hit the like, subscribe, folks, and take care, folks. Have a good day, folks. Bye-bye.